I'll just play bread and butter. Complain, 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 complain. <laughs> Cover anything in chocolate that's better. Honestly, most bread and butter puddings say, oh, leave it for an hour to soak. I don't do that. I might leave it for 10 minutes while the oven's heating or whatever. But I put it straight in. Look at this beauty. Isn't this gorgeous? I mean, honestly, it went in so ugly, but I'm sorry, I don't think that's ugly at all. It's very hot, it's very, 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 very hot. Can you see that? Can you see how absolutely lush that is? Hello, beautiful darlings. Today I'm going to be showing you how I make my chocolate bread and butter pudding. Um, I basically, um, well, I say I made this up, I'm sure there's lots of recipes out on the internet, to be honest. But one day I was doing bread and butter pudding and the kids were being all very fussy about it. They don't like raisins, they thought it sounded awful. I'll just play bread and butter, complain, 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 complain. So I thought, what can I do? What can I do? And I thought, chocolate. <laughs> Cover anything in chocolate is better, honestly. So I basically, because I have been cooking for decades um i just threw things in a pan and it all worked out and was fine but then i thought you know what this would be really nice to um teach somebody else because i actually made it for some friends i've made it for some family and they absolutely adored it um plus and okay just bear with me on this it can be actually quite nice cold as a slice just on its own like that um you can have it with custard you can have it with cream i don't have it with anything i just like it as it is because it's just so yummy um you can have it hot you can have it cold flexible so uh without further ado let me get into my chocolate bread and butter pudding so as you can see the my beautiful assistant simon has already done this now with my bread and butter pudding it is chocolate overload we have cocoa we have sweets and these I particularly like. These uh, are Smarties. No, I have no affiliation to Smarties. The reason I like these is because it's like a little surprise. Because the orange ones have orange oil in, yes, that is a fact, which I've known since the 80s and a lot of people don't believe me, but it's true. Um, when I sprinkle them in the bread and butter pudding to create little explosions of chocolate, every now and again, you'll get an explosion of uh, chocolate orange, which is gorgeous. I mean, you could do the whole thing with the chocolate orange chocolate. So many places are doing them now. It's not just Terry's and all those Cadbury's and Galaxy and everybody. So, and also, just FYI, this um, can be made um, dairy-free, I mean, milk-free, not vegan, because I use eggs, and I haven't managed to find a recipe without eggs as yet, but it can be milk-free, as um, I know some friends of mine have a problem with cow's milk. In that case, you would use um, a dairy-free chocolate spread and a dairy-free margarine, um, I think this is actually soy milk, just because I'd prefer it in this, but cow's milk is absolutely fine. And again, dairy-free chocolate, which you can get all over the place. I know if you want to have chocolate uh, orange, Galaxy do uh, chocolate orange that's vegan and very delicious, I have to say, because I've had it. It's really nice. Just as smooth, just like normal Galaxy, but obviously milk-free and milk chocolate, if you get my meaning. So, let me get started. Right, I'm going to be putting it in my beautiful pie dish. I should hopefully fit. I haven't actually done it in here before, so this is going to be a bit of an experience for me as well. I'm just going to pop that over there. So, Simon's already buttered this and nutella it. Now, if those of you who have Nutella normally... I think the general consensus is you just put Nutella straight onto bread, apparently. Um, I don't have it that often because it is just too addictive. It's usually for the kids. Um, but because this is bread and butter pudding and you do need that butter flavour just to sort of, you know, it, it just makes such a difference. We've buttered the slices and then nutella them. So, although I know you know how to butter a slice of bread, I know you know that. I'm just going to go through one with you just to sort of show how we do this so let me just put it on here and then i'm just going to say we have to cut them up we cut them into um diagonal triangles and arrange them nicely in the tin another thing to say is some people cut the crusts off now it's entirely up to you i'll be honest with you 
I do like the crusts in the custard. I don't know, they just add a different texture. They get soaked up with the, well I say custard because we're putting egg and milk in and sugar and basically essentially that makes a kind of a beautiful egg custard but because it's soaked into the bread, it kind of French toasts the whole thing. Um, and so I find it really, really nice with the crusts on so I've always left them on. No one's ever complained and that's fine by me. So that's the first bit. So there's the butter and then the Nutella. So I'm just going to pop this on as carefully as possible because I really don't want the butter to get into the Nutella, which I think I've already, that ship has sailed. Don't worry, no one mind. This is the family one. They won't kick me out. I know all the good, where all the good stuff is hidden. So let me just shove this on. And it, it literally is just a case of, it looks like a lot, but you know, this is a dessert. Be a bit decadent. Simon's been quite um, normal on his, actually. I've got a bit, I've got a bit crazy and a bit overboard. Don't matter. I think everybody will know which ones are mine. So this is my very, very bad Nutella spreading. It, you know what? As I said, I don't do this very often because it's just such a nightmare. I just go, Simon, can I have some Nutella on toast? And then let him deal with it because it's just so sticky. Anyway, so here we go. So all I'm going to do now is cut these roughly into diagonal shape. It doesn't have to be neat, it doesn't have to be pretty because once the custard in, it all puffs up and it'll forgive a multitude of sins. So you can either cut them off all in one go and then do it and then, you know, pop them in. But I think to do it on as you go because they're just getting stickier and stickier. Now that I've just put a few in a greased pan here. It's just literally greased with butter, nothing else. And just put them in all around the edge and work your way into the center. They are very, very messy, I have to warn you. Very messy to deal with. You can overlap them a little bit and just get them in. It doesn't matter if there's a little tiny bit sticking out the top. We don't want too much to be above the lip. I mean, I quite like them when they go a bit crisp, crispy and, and stuff. And then what we're gonna do is just keep lining this with the triangles until it's full. So I will carry on with this and then I'll come back to you when the whole thing is filled up. So there we go, I've crammed all of mine in. Um, it looks fairly, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's messy, it's chocolate. I'm an absolute wreck. So I'm just gonna wipe my hands and then get on to the next bit. I mean, as I said, with this, with this dessert, it is at this stage, bit of a messy situation but once it has really puffed up once it's got all the egg custard in and once it's let me shove that down there once it's really started to cook it's, it's going to be absolutely fine now normally what I would do is sprinkle spotties on each layer that's when I've used a different bowl where I've actually layered them flat that way but because this is a, a pie dish I'm just going to sprinkle these in, get my knife actually, I'll just do it with the hands. Sprinkle these in where I can, that's a little bit of an overload there. And then just put them in where I can. Because, as, because they're all like that way, if I'd sprinkled them in, they just all sunk to the bottom. So it may seem a bit daft doing it, but after everything's done, but otherwise you just get a pile of chocolate on the bottom, which in case that's nothing wrong with that. But at least this way I can sort of try and get them to stick between the slices as this is a pie dish. If you are doing it in a casserole dish, which would probably be more sensible to be honest, um, then you can layer them a little bit that way. I mean, I tend to do this with them anyway. I tend to do them at an angle and then pop in some of the Smarties um, as and when. Oh, there's an orange one. There's probably orange ones in this one. But this is just a case of, there's a few at the bottom there making sure that most of them get a few Smarties stuck in between the Nutella. As I said, it looks a bit of a mess at the moment, but when it is all sort of filled up with custard and cooked, you, you just want to eat the whole thing. It's so, so gorgeous. So I've only got a small bag of Smarties here, and to be quite honest, that's done the trick. I don't really think we need many more. There's just nowhere to, to pop them. 
I could say apart from my mouth, but I'm trying to be good. So, right, there we go. So I've crowned them in. You can see some of them on the surface, but when I put in the custard, we'll squish them down a bit more anyway. It's best that they are covered. It's cooked for between 30 to 40 minutes, depending on your oven. So there's that done, which I have created an almighty mess. There we go. Let's get that bit out of the way. Give me a bit of space. Just Nutella. I've been finding Nutella all over the place. It's Nutella on the Nutella. Right. So I'm just going to try and clean as much of the Nutella off as possible. So now onto the custard. So we've got eggs, we've got milk, we've got sugar with Nutella in, obviously. Um, and I'm just going to basically mix some of the sugar in here. Don't need a huge amount of sugar because obviously we've got no sugar with all that uh, Nutella in there, so that's going to be sweet enough. But it is, if you're going to put in a ton of custard, it is going to water all the flavour down. And put in some milk. Mix this in. This may look quite a lot, but I want it to really, I want it to really absorb in. And I'm just going to get a little bowl over here. Stretching my way. I've got cocoa, so there's going to be chocolate milk as well. Like I said, it's very chocolatey. And I'm not going to... Let me just get this out of the way, because you can't see anything, can you? So I've only just put a spoon in there. Another heaped teaspoon. I'll probably do three really heaped teaspoons. The tiniest smidgen of milk, just to make it into a paste. When you're dealing with cocoa powder, and it's so... It's such a light powder, you have to really build it up, she says, making another mess, of course. It's uh, one of those, um, it's like icing sugar. And you, I don't know if you've ever opened icing sugar and poured it into a bowl. And you know, you great big clouds of sugar. Um, and it's very fine. But you've got to really build it up with the liquid uh, before you put it into the milk. Gosh, it's taking its time. I will get back to you when this is actually mixed in because it's going to take a while, but I'm doing it bit by bit. We're getting there, we're getting there. The other thing as well is because you don't want lumps. And cocoa powder does... Actually, I'm nearly there. Cocoa powder does have a, a real capacity to lump if you put it into liquid. If, you, if I just poured that straight into there, it would just have great big balls of, of cocoa powder, which would not mix in, which would stay <laughs> complete, sit on top of the... Uh, bread and butter pudding. So I've now got it into a really thick paste. As you can see there, it's just a thick solid glob. So I've got to now thin it so it's going to mix in okay into the egg. But yeah, you'd get, um, if you just chucked it straight in, it would just sit on the top. And then you'd have to go and mix them all in. It'd be an absolute mare. So I'm just giving this a mix. I might not use all of it actually because it's actually probably a little bit more than I needed, but we'll see, we'll see. Whatever happens in the description, I will give you the exact amounts that work. So, like I said, I normally do this by sight. This is one of my recipes I've just been making for Yonks, and I know roughly that works and roughly that works. So there we go. So I've made it into a droppable paste, and that means that'll now mix in. There may be the odd tiny lump or bump, but it'll, it won't be that many. It won't make a huge difference in uh, the dessert. Whereas rather if you just put it in, you know, these big clumps would be awful. So I'm just going to put some of this in. i put all of it in, actually. I mean, it's chocolate. And then just give that a good old whisk up there. Oh, look at that. That's absolutely perfect, actually. So I think, note to self, it is two spoons of heaped spoons of cocoa. I'll weigh it out so you don't even have to guess what a heaped is. I'll just weigh it and then you'll know exactly the amount. Right, so I've just given that a good mix and it's all okay. So I've given that a really good mix there. I'm going to try and put that somewhere without it falling over, which it will. Put it there. So we have our pie dish and we have our chocolate custard mix. 
and we're literally going to I'm going to try now this can get messy be careful be warned and it's probably going to happen to me when you pour it over something because don't forget the bread has been buttered and covered it creates a lovely slippy surface so I've only done one side of the bread and butter pudding for this I know some recipes do both sides but the reason I've only done one side is so that at least one side of the bread has some absorption left to soak up the custard if you do both then you're really going to have a problem and i mean most bread and butter puddings say oh leave it for an hour to soak i don't do that i might leave it for 10 minutes while the oven's heating or whatever but i put it straight in so if you just do the one side which it, it comes out perfectly gorgeous and lovely it should be fine but be careful when this is being poured slow and steady try to make sure you've got all the little edges and the the crusts I mean as I said it's bound some of it's bound to go onto the table just be careful and cautious make sure you don't have any pets around chopped it doesn't seem to work very well for cats and dogs oh there we go just spilt some already I knew it was going to happen it's just so tricky at least you know I spill it as well and I've been doing this for years I know it's going to happen it's just really difficult to make sure you've covered every last little bit um, and then at the same time, oops, just did it straight again. <laughs> at the same time, not spill it on the table. I've only lost a little bit though, but it is an occupational hazard. I'm sure you guys will be a lot more careful. I have been notoriously clumsy all my life. I'm not even going to try to make excuses. It's just, yeah, I'm clumsy. Now, it looks like I have too much on it, which I do not, and I'll tell you why. Because the bits of bread are close together um just get this out here they will have stuck together and like i said even though i've got the back of the bread unbuttered it will still have stuck so you're going to get dry bits like this is totally very dry there so as well as squishing it down i tend to just go and stick a knife in and just make sure that any dry bits have managed to get the liquid to swim in this is dry at the back here you'd be surprised at what you find this is dry at the back here and this point I go around with this and re soak it up so although it's a really easy dessert to do and it looks like you know a bit of a car wreck to be honest at this moment in time the taste is just oh my god um you will be covering this all up honestly you don't have to be you know Gordon Ramsay to be able to do this it really is the perfect dessert for messy people who are not very confident in the kitchen maybe or you know who just worry about everything looking perfect this will look perfect and I shall show you why at the end because you can always always make this look better um it is just a question of ensuring so everything is in there and have we got everything in there yes we have as i said just putting the knife through i can feel when i feel there's a bit of give i know that there's no custard in that bit but this is actually pretty custarded up there's still a tiny bit more space for the last little bit which i'm going to just eek on there we go i'm gonna let that soak through because it, it'll just the bread will start to absorb it and um, get all that gorgeous chocolatiness. This is so lovely. And then what I'm going to do is uh, wipe the sides before I put it in the oven. So I can feel that's actually quite firm. Because you have to use day old bread. Is the other thing as well, apparently. Now, I don't know the reason why. There probably is a reason. And I shall look that up. And if I do, when I take it out of the oven, I shall tell you if there's uh, any particular thing for that. But to be honest, I've only ever cooked it when we've got bread that's starting to go you know stale the kids haven't eaten it that week for some reason and um you know i think to myself well i don't want to waste this so if i don't make it into breadcrumbs for a recipe and pop it in the freezer i'll make this so, okay I've just i've just poured the last little bit on here so that's that gone so get my knife and just make sure this is all this is quite high to the top i made a bit of a, a tiny little bit of a mess there only because you know something sometimes that happens so I'm just going to wipe it 
quite easily. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you don't really have to do this. It just makes it look nicer, that's all. And it will bake on. So if I just give that a little wipe around the edge, but it's, you know, it's a very full pie tin. Ooh, it's just leaking out of the side. I can't seem to stop it. So it's inevitable. I will get the odd dribble, but there we go. So I've wiped that. I don't know if I can try to show you without spilling it. Um, and I'm going to pop that in the oven now. Uh, 160 fan oven, 180 normal. Um, and I will um, I put all the, all the right bits and pieces in there. So I'm going to pop it in the oven and when it comes out, it'll be all really puffy, just to warn you. And then as soon as it sort of sits out for a little bit, because obviously you just need to leave it to, just to sit for a while, maybe like five, ten minutes at maximum, because it'll be really, really puffy because that egg will have puffed everything up, and the air and the bread and stuff, and then it'll sink back down. Um, and it'll be, you know, how it should be, all nice and gorgeous and comforting and full of chocolate. And then if you don't like the way it looks, all you've got to do is just sprinkle some icing sugar over the top of it or sprinkle some more chocolate if you want to have perfect chocolate overload. But I think for me, this is chocolatey enough. I mean, I still think it looks really exciting and really delicious brought to the table. Um, some bits will be a bit more golden. Now, it's a bit more difficult to tell for a chocolate bread and butter pudding exactly when it's cooked, because obviously a normal one, it's um, going to have a very pale colour because of the milk, and you'll be able to see it's golden brown. But with this one, slightly more difficult. But between 30 to 40 minutes, keep checking it. Um, it will have a little bit of a wobble, but it should be sort of fairly firm. And then as I said, if it's, if it's quite puffy on the top, then that's a really good sign. And then when you take it out, it will go... Phew. If it goes in too much, then you probably took it out a bit too early. But yeah, between 30 to 40 minutes. I mean, I, I would sort of, if you worry after 30 minutes and think, oh, that's getting a bit brown, I don't know. Just cover it with some foil and pop it back in for another 10. It'll be absolutely fine. You probably won't get totally all the crispy bits, but it'll still be fantastic. So I'm going to put this in the oven now and um i will come back to you when it has come out and you can see what it looks like and i will have some very happy children because they love this so see you in a bit hello darlings look at this beauty isn't this gorgeous i mean honestly it went in so ugly but i'm sorry i don't think that's ugly at all it's very hot it's very 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 hot can you see that can you see how absolutely lush that is i think but that is so fantastic. And you know what? This is just such a great dessert for those of us who aren't brilliant with finesse. I mean, I can do finesse when I really, really have to. I have to concentrate a heck of a lot and um, it is quite stressful. Um, but, you know, for home cooking, which is pretty much what I'm doing here, for cooking for friends, for family, even for a dinner party, you know, if you're going to be doing more comfort food, this would be absolutely gorgeous with some single cream drizzled all over the top. You could even do these little individual ramekins, which would be fantastic. Adjust the cooking time, obviously. Um, but just to have something on the table, you know, just to welcome people. I mean, I just believe that food is just, it's showing love, really, when you feed somebody. And when you put the effort in to just, I mean, this is literally, you wouldn't believe that this was just some Nutella on bread with butter, some Smarties. It looks gorgeous. It does taste gorgeous. I know it will. I will take a photo of a slice taken out of it for you. And you can see just how smashing it is and just how tasty it is. If you feel that you don't like the uniformity or the, the kind of rustic look that it has there, which I absolutely adore, Feel free just to dust it with icing sugar um, or you can dust it with a little bit of cocoa powder. Be warned though that the cocoa powder will be a little bit bitter but sometimes it can make it nice kind of grown up. You can sprinkle it with choc chips, with white choc chips at this point or even milk or dark if you so want because it's so hot that they will slowly melt in and then just create this gorgeous topping on the top. I'm going to leave it as it is. I don't really want to muck around with it because I just love how it has come out. But as I said, this is just so brilliant. It's just so easy. I have to say in my oven, I did it at 160 and it took 45 minutes. Um, it will depend on your oven. Um, I say, I think the original said 30 to 40 minutes. So it was an extra five minutes, but I will put that down in the description down below. So you will have all the information to hand. You'll know exactly what you're dealing with and how long it took me, etc., etc., etc. So... 
I'm going to go off and feed the hungry hordes and um, I would just like to say thank you absolutely loads for joining me on this video. I just adore having you with me. You've been great company listening to me prattle on. Um, I do hope you've enjoyed the video as well. Uh, if you do make this, let me know. If you change it or add anything fantastic and it comes out brilliant, let me know. I will celebrate your successes on my social media with great pride. Um, but yeah, just enjoy if you do have it. And thank you once again. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care, darlings. Bye.